Modern cameras truly are marvels. They're so good now at low light conditions that it's really the quality of the light that matters anymore, not the quantity of the light. Most people think that as soon as you need extra light on a subject, you need an expensive flash unit. And these can work great. Absolutely no question. The light from a flash can be extremely harsh. It can be directional, you can cast bad shadows. We're going to look at a couple of different light sources that you find around your house. Candles, flashlights, incandescent bulbs. It's a continuous light source. You can see exactly where the shadows are going, exactly where the catch lights are in somebody's eyes, and it can make people a little more comfortable with the outcome. It's been said it's better to light a single candle than to curse the darkness. Candlelight can be beautiful light for photography. Key things to remember here is that candles are not very bright. You're going to have to use a high ISO, probably in the 4000 range, something like that. And you're also going to have to keep an eye on your white balance. You're going to need to put it down, probably if you can, put it on the K value setting. Set it to about 2500 Kelvin. Or you could try using the little light bulb setting, which is the incandescent setting. And a little bit of the rosy glow is expected when you're using a candle anyway. Remember, candles are portable. You can move it around and see which way you find the most pleasing. A flashlight can be another light source for your photographic portraits. The problem with flashlights, of course, is the light itself can be too concentrated a beam. To soften it out, take a tissue from your pocket, create a little tent around it, and it works just like a lampshade. And even if you're sitting around eating s'mores around a campfire, you can have your own little softbox right in your pocket. I have an idea. You could use the light bulbs found in your house to make your own portraits. I have a little mini clamp light here, which I like to use. It's simple. You can put any kind of light bulb in here. You can use a floodlight. You can use a little incandescent bulb. And these create that lovely, soft, gentle light. You can use the desk lamp at home, which is a little more directional. You can use a reading lamp. You can take a lampshade off of a, a lamp beside your sofa. The thing that works with these, they're an interesting visual element if you include them in the photograph. But remember that if they move away from your subject any amount, you're going to have to change your exposure. As the light falls away very quickly. The other thing you may want to think about if you're using a light source like this, try to keep the subject's eyes towards the light source. No matter which direction they're looking, as long as they're looking towards the light source, it can be a very flattering light. Another great option for people can be a video light. These are small, they're portable, Generally speaking, less expensive than a flash unit. And because it's a continuous light source, again, you can see exactly where the shadows are falling. The beauty of many of these lights is that you can control the output of them, so how strong the light is. You can control the color balance, what color temperature it is. So you can balance it out with the natural lighting in your situation. Keep it around eye level as much as possible. Any higher, you start doing that Blair Witch effect. Any lower, horror movie effect. Off to the side is generally the nicest looking. And again, you can move it around until you find just the right angle that you're looking for. So don't despair if you don't have your flash with you. There's light all around us. As photographers, we just have to know where to look for it. Chances are you've even got some in your pocket.